Welcome to this, the third video on why people find programming so hard. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video we're going to be looking at some computer code itself. In this case we're looking at a language called Python, but it's not about the language. It's about programming in general, and this could be a program written in Java or in Visual Basic or in C Sharp or in C++. It's the principle I want to show you, not the practice. Let me start at the beginning. This program starts off with a line that just says print and some brackets closed. And then there's all sorts of gobbledygook. Well, it looks like gobbledygook when you first look at it. But what it is is a series of commands that tell the computer what to do and I'm going to go through that series of commands with you to show you that it isn't the sort of magic that people tend to assume it is. That first line just says print nothing. In other words, it's going to create a blank line. The second line says print hello Andy and a smiley face. Well, Andy always comes with a smiley face. And then another blank line. The line that is blank, that line 4, is just there to help me read the code. All I've got is a section at the top that does some printing, and now I'm going into a different section, so I'll leave a blank line, in the same way as you'd leave a blank line between paragraphs if you were writing something. There's nothing clever going on here. The next bit, lines 5 and 6, are a loop, and what it's saying is count round the loop until you get to 3. So it's going to create a variable called comp. A variable is just a place in the computer's memory that it uses to temporarily store a value. And so we've got this place called comp and it's going to store the numbers between 0 and 3. And every time it goes round that loop it'll increase the value of comp by 1 until it gets to 3. And each time it goes round that loop, it's going to print, this is your computer. So it's going to print, this is your computer, three times. OK, that's that paragraph completed. Another blank line. And now what we're going to do is to ask the user to enter a number. And when they enter that number, it's going to turn it into an integer. An integer is a whole number. So if you enter 5, it turns the text 5 into the number 5. So x now contains a number. The final line of code says print 2 times and then this curly bracket d thingy, and that looks terribly complicated. Well, it isn't. All it is is asking the computer to print out two integers. Colon D is its short form for an integer. And it's putting that in curly brackets. That's a peculiarity of Python. You don't need to remember any of that. All that it's doing is saying print out two things. And the two things it's going to print out are the two things that come in the format command at the end. So X, the number that the user entered, and X times 2. So we're going to double the number that we started with. Now let me show you that program running. As you can see, it says, Hello Andy, and it leaves a blank line. It's printed out, this is your computer, three times. And now it's asking me for a number. So I'm going to put in a number, three, and it says, two times three is six. It's got its arithmetic correct. Excellent. Let's do that again, just to show you that it wasn't a fluke. Right. It's printed, hello Andy. It's printed three lots of this is your computer. It's asking me to enter a number again. This time I'm going to put in five, and it says two fives are ten. Well, that's good. But now I'd like to show you a slightly different program. This program has an if in it. It is exactly the same as the program before. It has a print, hello Andy, and the blank line bits as well. 
it prints out this is your computer three times it asks me to enter a number and turns that number into an integer but now we've got an if if x is not equal to 5 the exclamation mark in computing means not so if x is not equal to 5 it prints out exactly the same as we did before but if it is equal to 5 in other words if that condition is not true it prints out I like chocolate and personally my preference is for the second one so let's try this program running as you can see it says hello Andy this is your computer and it asks me for a number so if I type in 3 it says 2 times 3 is 6 exactly the same as it did before but what happens if I type in 5 if I use 5 instead it now says I like chocolate now you can see that the logic here is rather different and that brings up one of the two possible errors that you might have. The first error that we're going to look at is the logic error. Here, what we want is a program that multiplies a particular number by 2. In my case, it works for every number except 5. And for 5, it prints out, I like chocolate. Now that's silly, and you can see it's silly, but it's a an example of the sort of thing that creeps into computer programs very easily. You've got the code correct, but there is a bit of logic somewhere, not as extreme as this, but there is a bit of logic somewhere that says, don't do it the right way, it's a trick. And so the computer doesn't do it the right way, and it isn't fooled because you've told it to do something else. Tracking down logic errors like this can be quite a pain. And what most programmers do is they put in a, a line that prints out all sorts of various bits and pieces that they can use to track where in the program the logic has gone wrong. In this case, for, from our point of view, it goes wrong only when x is equal to 5. And we can see that. That's trivial. But in many cases, you're not sure where something has gone wrong. Just print things out. And then when you get to the real program, when you've got all these errors sorted out, then you can just delete those lines that do the excess printing. Nobody will ever know they were there. And that works well for all programmers. But the most common type of error is the syntax error where something is not laid out in the way that the computer expects. Let me generate an error for you. I'm going to delete that final bracket. Can you see that that final bracket is now missing? There is obviously a problem. Now, when I try to run it, it says, oh, I don't like this. There's all sorts of errors. And it looks terribly difficult. Well, it's not as difficult as it seems. Let me show you. You see, in most programming environments, and this is one called Wing IDE, in most programming environments it will tell you where the error occurs. So it says it's in line 3, somewhere after 0. And you think, line 3? But, 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 and it isn't. And that's typical of computer programming languages. That's why people find programming so difficult. You can see that line 3 is fine. There's nothing wrong with line 3. And so you're searching there. What it's really saying is that it was when I got to line 3 that I found the error. And that is the bit that you need to take notice of. The error will occur at or before where it tells you. So, for example, we look at the line before, line 2, and hello Andy, yep, that's fine. Ah, but silly me, I've left a bracket out. And it will go back a line or two before where you're at. It will never go back miles. It's, we're talking about one or two lines here. 
I put the bracket in, having realised my mistake, and away I go. Then it's working again. Let's try that with something else. Losing a bracket, that's a bit harder to do, but losing a, a quotation mark, that is much easier. Can you see that it's now come up red and underlined? Red and underlined means that your programming environment has recognised immediately that there's an error, that there's something that you've done wrong. And that's fine. All you have to do is find out what it is, and usually if you type in something like this, finding that sort of error can be quite difficult. For you and me, it's obvious that we've got to put that quotation mark back in. But it isn't always so obvious when you're actually looking at it because you typed it in and it looks right. You've just got to get used to the idea that if something doesn't go right, it's you, the programmer, that needs to change it, not the computer. The computer is fine. You, the programmer, have to change it. And that sounds as if I'm beating you with a stick. You, child, are silly. No, you, child, are human. You and I make mistakes. Wow, get over it. It really doesn't matter. The computer hasn't gone into silly mode just because I've generated a couple of errors. It really doesn't matter. Let's try something else. I'll type in print. Print is a word that it understands. And if I typed it in English with two ends, you'd think, ah, oh, silly Andy, he's put two ends in there. But your computer will see it as OK, this is a command, I shall try and do it. But when I try and run the program, it'll say, I don't understand print with two ends. Print is not defined. OK, it's not defined. Silly me. Line two. OK, this time it's told us the correct line. Line two, I just delete one of the ends, and I'm back working again. So let me recap. First of all, programming is easy. It looks difficult because it's well outside your zone of proximal development. It's outside your experience. And there are several things that you can do to make your life easier. You can leave yourself some time, you can develop patience, and best of all, you can work away at getting through the program in little bits. If there's an error, don't worry about it. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you find the error. And there are all sorts of techniques that you'll learn over the years to help you find those errors much more quickly. I hope you found this useful, and I hope that you enjoy programming as much as I do.